Hello and welcome to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Happy New Year everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and got to spend some time with some people that you love and eat lots of delicious food. Now over Christmas, I got a brilliant present from the guys at Vorwork. It's this Thermomix. Now I've heard of a Thermomix for a while, but I've never used one before. A lot of my friends have them, some of them are actually chefs and they love them, but I've never used one until now. And I wasn't sure how I'd get on with it, I wasn't sure if it'd be my cup of tea, but I can honestly say I've had heaps of fun using it and I absolutely love it. Um, so what is it, I hear you ask? It is essentially a smart kitchen. So there's over 20 appliances in one. You can do things like chopping and heating, you can even knead dough, you can pulverise, you can blend, all at the touch of a button. Um, it's absolutely so simple to use. I, I, I'm not very good with technology, I must say. Um, and I didn't know if having something like this in my life would actually make my life easier <laughs> or if it would just make me feel like a, an, an idiot. But it's really simple to use. Even a complete novice could use it. Um, Another really cool thing about it is that you can link up to Thermomix's online platform which is called Cookie Do. and if you're not sure what to eat for dinner or you want to make something you're familiar with but you've never made it in a Thermomix so you're not quite sure how to do it, you can use the search function to search for recipes and it will bring up loads of recipes and then take you step by step. So it's a super easy way to get delicious food. So, I'm going to show you how to make something that I made over the holidays. I actually made this for my friends on New Year's Eve and they loved it. Um, it's a rich, tangy chocolate orange tart and I made every element of it in my trusty Thermomix. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first bit to make is um, a short crust chocolate pastry and it's very, very simple. Now, another good thing about this Thermomix is you can actually set it to be scales, it's got an inbuilt scale, so you can weigh your ingredients directly into the mixing bowl. Like, hello, that's a time saver. So I'm gonna start by putting in 225 grams of plain flour. And then I'm going to put in 20 grams of cocoa powder. And next is 30 grams of icing sugar. And also a pinch of salt, because as we know, pinches of salt are very, very beneficial in cooking, even sweet stuff. And now I have got 150 grams of cold chopped butter. This has been in the fridge for a little while. Doop, doop. And then we want to whack on the lid. Now, I am going to use the turbo function, which is a little bit like, woo, it's like a robot. <laughs> It's a little bit like a pulse function on like a food processor. And obviously if you were making this by hand, um, which of course you can do, this would just take a long time. This is super quick, the turbo. So I'm going to have it on one second um, and I'm going to start it. <laughs> so exciting. And just do that a couple of times. It's very loud. And if I have a little peek, so that's a nice fine breadcrumb consistency. So now I'm going to add three tablespoons of icy cold water through the little hole in the top. And then we'll just do the same thing basically. So you can either do one or two second bursts. I'm gonna try two second bursts, why not? And here we go. Let's have a little look. Oh, not quite. One more go, I reckon. Yeah, that's clumping together. So I'm going to turn a turbo off, which releases the robot arms. And I'm going to finish this off by hand. So I'll just turn it out onto my worktop. Oh, got a little bit left in there. So this is just needing a really brief knead. So bring it all together by hand, give it a squish. Get all the little crumbs. And I've made this pastry a few times in the Thermomix and it is really exactly, it ends up exactly the same as when you make it by hand. And don't worry if you don't have a Thermomix, there's heaps of videos on the Cupcake Gemma channel which will show you how to do pastry and custard tarts and all sorts of other things. So, we're gonna just pop that into a round because this does need to chill like all pastry, just needs to relax a little bit. Um, so this needs to go into the fridge for at least four hours and preferably overnight. So, good night, little pastry round. Who 
am I kidding? I obviously made some earlier. So this has been chilling out in the fridge, but I did just take it out about 20 minutes before I wanted to roll it, just so it's not like rock hard, otherwise it can be quite difficult. So get some flour and dust your worktop. Obviously, we don't want it sticking. And I'm going to also dust my rolling pin and get it rolled. So you want to be rolling this to three or four millimetres thick and I'm going to be using a nine inch fluted tart tin as such and I'm going to just drape this over my rolling pin, grab my tin and just lay it over the top and you want to be really careful to ease it in gently so that you don't tear but don't worry if you do tear you can easily patch this up with a bit of excess pastry. Just into all the corners and the edges. Uh, I'm going to use my finger just to push it into the corners, just to make sure I don't get any like awful bagginess. So I like to keep my excess pastry. If you, if you feel like you've rolled it a bit too big and there's a bit too much excess pastry, just use a pair of scissors to chop th those excess bits off. And like I said, if you've got any holes or any cracks, just grab a little bit of excess, roll it to warm it a little bit and use that as a kind of uh, polyfiller, if you, if you will, pastry polyfiller. Um, and this will just need to go into the fridge for at least half an hour to chill out before baking. But don't worry guys, I got you. And I've also got a chilled <laughs> pastry case. So, swaparoo. Ooh. So this has been chilling out for about half an hour. And we're going to blind bake it. So you can um, just grab a fork and just go making a couple of holes just so it doesn't puff up too much. And blind baking, if you don't know, is where you kind of pre-bake your, your case. So I'm going to put some crunkled up, crunkled, is that a word? <laughs> is now. Crin crinkled and crunkled up uh, baking paper into my tart tin. And that's going to create a barrier between my pastry and what I'm using as baking beans, which today is split peas. I've been using these split peas for years and actually they haven't changed a bit. Uh, so just pour those in and just push it all into the edges and the corners and this will help your pastry from uh, to stop it from sort of thickening up too much when it's baking. And now this needs to go into the oven at 170 degrees C for 15 minutes for starters. Once it's had 15 minutes you can need to take it out of the oven and very carefully remove the paper and the baking beans and put those to one side. Then whisk up an egg and give the whole of the base and the sides an egg wash before putting it back into the oven for another 15 minutes. My pastry case is baked, my pastry case is baked. So now it's time to make the orange custard filling. It's really, really simple and I can use the Thermomix to kind of heat it and mix it at the same time because it's very clever like that. So I've got my butterfly whisk attachment, which is this guy. And this is what you would use if you were whipping cream or I actually made Swiss meringue over the holidays as well and that came out really nicely in the um, Thermomix. So pop that in and I'm gonna start by putting four whole eggs in along with two egg yolks. Next I'm going to zest in one and a half oranges and then I'm going to juice one lemon which will just give it a bit of extra tang. That'll be about 40 grams. Then I'm going to squeeze enough orange juice out to get it up to 135 grams. Next is 150 grams of double cream and then I'm going to add 195 grams of caster sugar and an all important pinch of salt. Okay so now we can set this to do its thing and leave it, which is one of the other brilliant things about the Thermomix. It can do the stirring for you and the heating, so you can go off and like paint your nails or whatever. So I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. Ooh, and that five. And set the temperature to 75 degrees C. And then I'm going to set the speed starting off at two. And then once it's had a few seconds, I'll increase it to two and a half. And just leave that. I'm gonna go put my feet up. See you later. Oh, what a lovely little tune it plays. <laughs> Thanks, little Thermomix. 
So my custard is ready. And as you can see, it's got steamy hot in there, um, which is very exciting. You can make things like creme patissiere and regular custard in here um, with this heating function. It's very clever. Right. This does need a sieve though, because it has all those bits of orange and maybe some eggy bits in. You don't want those sort of lumping up your tart. So pour that through a sieve. Oh, it smells so nice and so orangey. Yummers. So once that's had its sieving, you can just pour that into your cooled tin. Now, I'm not going to lie, I didn't go and relax or put my feet up because I just couldn't. I needed to trim my pastry case. So um, if you had a bit of overhang of your um, pastry case, just trim that off using like a small serrated knife. Just be really, really careful. Um, so now it's all trimmed and it's time to pour this in. So here goes. I'm going to leave a little bit because I don't want to, it to be too full because there's something else going in this tart and I don't want to take up valuable space. So my oven is set to 135 degrees C and I'm going to very carefully, very slowly take that over, not tripping over my feet in the meantime and put that in. <gasps> we made it guys, we made it. And that just needs to bake at 1.30 for 25 minutes. My pie is looking absolutely gorgeous. Look at that lovely orangey yellow colour. Ooh, yum. I'm actually matching. I seem to be doing this a lot lately, matching my bakes. It's completely unintentional, I promise. Anyway, that has been out of the oven now and cooling down for about an hour. So I'm going to get on with making the topping, which is going to be a chocolate ganache. So. I have set my um, mixing bowl onto the scale function and I'm using 50% cocoa chocolate here. Um, you can use 70 if you want, it'll just be a little bit more intense, a little bit more bitter. And I'm going to measure out 200 grams. So I'm going to chop this up as small as possible using um, the blending function. So I'm going to set my timer for 30 seconds and obviously no heat yet because we don't want it to melt before we put the cream in. And now, just a warning, I'm gonna put this onto a high speed and it gets super duper loud. And the other day I did it and it freaked my kid out so much. So if you've got kids or animals or people with very sensitive hearing, like, I don't know, super superheroes, make sure they're pr protected. And I'm gonna set this to level six, ready? Oh, hang on, wrong one. <laughs> I'll probably do it. Let's have a little look. Open. Oh my god, I've got such magical powers. Right, so it's nice and chopped up in here. As you can see, it's sort of crumbly and dusty. So now I'm going to set it back to scales and add the same amount. So 200 grams of double cream in there. Ooh. Ooh, there we go. Pop the lid on. And then back to home. And here we go. I'm going to set this to two minutes. And then I'm also going to set the temperature because obviously we want to sort of melt the chocolate in with the cream. So I'm going to set this to 50 degrees and just a sort of low speed. There you go. See you in two. so relaxing it just makes cooking such a relaxing experience you know so we have chocolate ganache in here Got that lovely ganache so I'm simply going to pour that on top of my tart which is all nice and cool here it goes mm. and then just using a palette knife I'm going to Push it all to the sides and level it all out. Ooh, yummy. So this needs to set, otherwise it's gonna be running all over the plate. Uh, so just leave that in a cool place, not the fridge, because it might take the shine off a little bit of the ganache. Uh, just in a cool place is fine, and leave it for about an hour, and then we can get on with decorating it.
Look at my shiny tart. Just look at it. It's so shiny and lovely. But it looks a little bit boring right now. So let's jazz it up. So I've melted some dark chocolate here and I've put it into a little piping bag. I'm going to start by liberally going round and round and round, making a really nice sort of circle. But obviously it's not a circle. It's like one of those spirographs from the 80s. Anyway, I think it looks really cool. That'll do. And then, just to top it off, you can use anything like candy orange peel or even slices of sort of dried orange. That would look really nice. But I've got these. Now, there was some debate about how to pronounce the name of these. <laughs> I've always... Oh, hello, chocolate. I've always thought it was Fissilis, which is a bit like Chrysalis. My husband thinks it's Fissalis. Sally and I Googled it on the way here. And apparently, according to the Google voice, it is Fissilis. Is that right? Correct. So if you have anything to say about that, then please feel free to pop it in the comments box below. The main thing is that they smell really good and they look really pretty and they look really lovely to decorate the tart. So I'm just going to pop a few around the edge. Oh, look. I've made myself a classy little tart there. That looks so good. It smells delicious. So this is my tangy, rich chocolate orange tart made in the Thermomix. If you're interested at all in the Thermomix and you think, I want one of those for myself, then head to vorework.co.uk where you can find out a lot more information and book yourself in for a cooking experience at your leisure. So that's really, really fun. But most fun bit is really eating chocolate tart, I think. So, without further ado, let's get slicing. Oh, look at those layers. Oh, that is so delicious. Smells great. Tastes great. Here's the proof. Mm. Oh my God. So orangey. Mmm, it's so good. You've got the short chocolate pastry, the really silky, tangy orange, super orangey custard, and that lovely, rich, smooth ganache. And as an extra treat, you've got an unpronounceable fruit. Brilliant. So I hope you make this, and thanks for joining me. If you do make it, make sure you take a picture and put it on Instagram using the hashtag CupcakeGemma so we can see it. And we will be back next week with another recipe. Bye-bye-bye.